Yo guys, welcome back to the channel. I hope you're having a lovely day. We're back with another video. Today, we're switching over to Warframe today, where I will be guiding you guys through the entire steel path and how to do it solo. As you can see behind me, I have all the trophies for all of the planets on the star chart in steel path. This will be split into different episodes and where I will be able to group missions, I will. And that is just because for those players who don't have that much of a diversity in their Warframe collection, they are able to do multiple missions with one frame. Now I'm not saying you'll be able to do the whole of the star chart with three frames, but it just does reduce the number of frames you need to complete the star chart. So today I'll be focusing on capture, spy and rescue. How this video will go and how the rest of them will is I will talk about the frames I'm using and why. I will then go on to look at the builds for each of the frames and then I will do a run through of the mission with what I believe is the best frame to do it with. So let's get into the first segment. Okay, so the first frame I would suggest or I would say the best in these three missions is, is Wukong. Now, of course, it doesn't have to be the prime, but the reason I would put him first is because his second ability, it combines the best of speed frames and also your invis frames. People like Titania and Gauss and also your Ash and Lokis. His Cloud Walker gives you invisibility when you're in it, but also when you are in it, you move exceptionally fast around the map and it's just going to make it a lot quicker to get through the mission and you're also not going to get detected by enemies. Now, the second reason is his passive. It basically grants you three life-saving abilities. You literally go to zero on health and shield and you will still stay alive. And one of them, I believe, is you become invisible. And that is perma invisibility for, I think it is 30 seconds. So you essentially have like a Loki or Ash invis ability as your passive saving ability. So that is Wukong. Now, we'll move on to the second frame. Okay, so the second frame I would recommend is Loki Prime. Now, there is one main reason why I would recommend this guy. And that is because of his second ability. Literally grants you perma invisibility, right? In the sense that you can shoot capture targets, you can rescue hostages, you can hack spy consoles all while invisible and it's just such a huge help you don't get bothered by enemies and you won't die and that is why I would recommend him now let's move on to the third and final frame okay so the third and final frame I would suggest is Ash now it's the same reason as Loki his second ability smokescreen you become invisible and you can do the same things as Loki can when he's invisible. Kill a capture target, rescue a hostage and hack a console for a spy mission. But the reason I have put Loki ahead of Ash is because first of all, Loki's second ability lasts a lot, a lot longer as its base. So if we have a look, smoke screen is 8 seconds as a base whereas Loki Prime or just Loki in general his is 12 seconds now it may not like seem like much but when you have the duration mods and things like that it does make a big difference okay but the second reason I have put Loki ahead of Ash is because Ash is I would say a stealth frame but also a weapon frame with his fourth ability for example blade storm 
mark enemies, kill them. Whereas, however, in these three missions, what we have in common is we're really not trying to get any enemy interaction, right? We're just trying to stay low profile, avoid any interaction with them, stop them shooting at us, stop them knocking us down, stunning us, anything like that. Which is why I have put Loki above him. He has longer duration and he is literally just a stealth frame. Now that I've told you all the reasoning, let's get into the builds. Okay, so we'll start off with the build. And we're first starting with who I think is the best, Wukong. Now, similar to Loki and Ash, the builds are going to be quite the same, right? We're only focusing on our second ability in all cases. So, in Wukong's case, we are only focusing on Drain and duration, or the efficiency of the duration. Range and strength do not matter in this case. So, the aura mod, this is up to you, to be honest. I've chosen steel charge because it gives me the most mod capacity, and it was also, it was also a um, majuri polarity by default. If you wanted to change it, you would need a former, but I couldn't really be bothered to. Plus, if you are using a melee weapon, like the Glaive, for example, 60% extra damage is quite nice to have. Then, we have Constitution, Organ Message, Prime Continuity. You can use Normal Continuity if you don't have Primed, and Narrow Minded. Now, obviously not all these mods are max, these two aren't, but this is buffing our duration as much as it can go. So now it has five and a half seconds on it, right? However, if you do not have all these mods or you have them not maxed or not that high a level, that's where our prime flow or normal, if you don't have primed, and our streamline come in because if we don't have that much duration obviously it's going to mean we need to cast it more so the prime flow is just going to increase the max capacity of energy that we can have and our streamline is going to make it so that if we do have to cast the ability multiple times due to low duration we're only using a small amount of energy to cast it okay and I would say that is just the base build you really need, to be honest. I could do that all three missions with ease with just those seven mods. What I would say would be quite nice to have is preparation. Just because at the start of the mission, you don't really need to faff around with your operator's hard spring and wellspring. Not that it's a problem. If you're fine with waiting for a couple of minutes just to get a bit of energy, that's completely fine. It's not necessary, it is just very helpful. Now, these final two mods here. I have got Armored Agility and Vigor. Now, these two are interchangeable, right? These two mod slots. You can have whatever you want in there. As I said, these eight mods here are all you need well seven if you just want these this is not necessary as i said it's just helpful so these two are entirely up to you what you want to put in there whether it's extra survivability with redirection or umbral vitality maybe you want knockdown resistance prime surefooted although as i said previously we're not going to have much enemy interaction so they're not going to really engage with you, they're not going to knock you down, so it's not really needed. But Redirection, Intensify, Vigor, a maxed one, Rolling Guard, Adaptation, any of these sort of things that will help you survive, you can put down. Now, for me, I've got Armored Agility, just because it gives me a bit of armor, which is quite nice, but also I get the Sprint Speed, which just makes the mission go that much quicker. Right, 
But as I said, it is entirely up to you. You choose what you think is best for you. Whether you're comfortable with just having that base build, whether you just want speed, whether you want natural talent, for example, to cast quicker, anything like that, they are entirely in your hands. Now, finally, we have our arcanes. Now, as I said, this is the base build you'd need and that I would suggest. So these two arcane slots are, again, optional. As I said, they do help, but not necessary. What One thing I do want to say is obviously I have Arcane Guardian on here, right? But even if you have a ranked zero Arcane Guardian, I would still put it on. Because the thing about Arcane Guardian compared to a few other Arcanes is that it's only the damage that changes. Sorry, not the damage, the armor that changes, as you can see. 150 for rank 0, 300 rank 1, 450 rank 2. But as you see, throughout all the ranks from unranked to rank 5, you still get that same 15% proc chance and it lasts 20 seconds. So even if you have unranked, just slap it on. Because 150 armor is still 150 armor, right? It could save you. Now, Arcane Aegis I have, again, just as a survivability one. You could have Arcane uh, Grace, for example. You could have any of the status Arcanes, if you are really that worried about getting hit with status. I know in the Steel Path, Heat can do... If you get procced with Heat, it can hurt you so much. <clears throat> But that isn't really that needed in this build. But yeah. Guardian, if you have unranked, just slap it on. Because it's only the armor that changes. And if you want survivability arcades. But as I said, if you don't have any, don't worry. It's not the end of the world. Also, if you do want me to make a sort of intermediate slash beginner guide on Eidolon hunting to get a couple arcanes for you guys let me know let me know down in the comments and i will make one but yeah that's the wukong build let's get into the loki one okay so the loki build pretty much the same as the wukong because again the idea is the same here we're mainly focusing on drain and duration well in this case we are just focusing on those two Range and strength have no role in this. Okay? And as you can see, or you will see, this Loki's invisibility has 33 seconds on it. And they, this is using the same duration mods as Wukong, and it will be on Ash. But, just to recap again, first of all, Energy Siphon, it is a negative polarity. Couldn't be bothered to former it to get extra mod capacity, but energy siphon I think is just nice just because you get that energy, uh, passive energy over time, which will help you when you need to cast your invisibility quite often, especially if you don't have the duration mods. But again, we have narrow minded, continuity, constitution, and organ message. Now, Again, same thing, Prime Flow and Streamline just help so that when you do cast it, you're only using a small amount of energy to cast it. However, what I would say is that Armored Agility is a definite on this sort of build. Because, well, it's a definite if you're going for speed. Because unlike Wukong, although Loki has Perma Invisibility and things like that, he is not quick. Wukong with his second ability has that maneuverability to get around the map quite quickly. Loki does not. So I will definitely recommend putting some sort of speed mod if you are trying to get through these missions especially quickly. These missions, spy, capture, rescue, they are designed to be quick because there's no fighting. You just get to the objective, get it done, 
get to extraction. And this final mod, again, is interchangeable. You can put whatever you want there. Obviously, I can't put anything too expensive in here because I've only got eight capacity left. But you can put whatever you want here. Onboard intensify again, redirection, anything like that. Equilibrium, if you're that worried about health, you know, getting energy, converting it into health. Hush, if you want to be extra quick. Vigor, you know, those sorts of things. Adaptation. All of that good stuff. And, of course, preparation. Again, start of the mission. Don't need to worry about hard spring or well spring from your operator. Just get into the mission. Put your ability on and go. Arcanes, again... Same thing really, survivability arcanes, guardian, I do have grace on this one, but you know, you can have any survivability arcane to be honest. I would definitely recommend guardian though, just because that extra armor is very nice. And that is it for that build, right? So in total, we've got a lot of duration here, we've got some efficiency. Range doesn't matter, so it can be minus, and strength just remains the same, but it doesn't really bother us. That is the build for Loki Prime. So let's get into the final build for Ash. So, the final build, Ash Prime. Of course it doesn't have to be Ash, but... So, again, similar to the other two, if not the same. We have steel charge because of the Majuri polarity and it gives us extra mod capacity. Then we have these four mods here for our duration. We have our streamline and prime flow. Increase the capacity, decrease the amount of energy we use per cast. Preparation, just so we don't have to wait at the start of the mission to gain some energy. Now, as I said before, these two are interchangeable, but for me personally, I have gone full speed here, which is why I've put sprint speed and it gives me a bit of extra armor, which is nice. And then my final one is natural talent, because if I forget to cast my ability and say it's been a second, which is enough time for enemies to start shooting me, I could be in trouble real quick. And because the idea of this build is to stay stealthy, stay out of enemy sight, things like that, there is not much health and shield here. So, I have opted for natural talent. It will just make me quicker to cast my second ability. It will be quicker for me to become invisible and get out of enemy sight. And then of course we have our arcades. Now... The Arcanes, again, optional, but I would definitely recommend if you are putting some on, some survivability Arcanes, Arcane Guardian of course, and Arcane Grace or Arcane Aegis, any of those sorts of things. So, that is all of the builds. Now, it says three former up here. This one I have formed for the preparations polarity, so you can probably get rid of that one. And I'm not sure how many of the other... If you're not using preparation, you've already got 11 more mod capacity anyway. So I think it should take maybe one former, maybe two. I will check and put some images at the end. But that is all of the builds. So, next what we're going to be doing is running through each of the missions with the, what I think is the best frame to do them with. Which is going to be Wukong. So let's get into it. Okay, Your so we're into the mission now. Alright, thank you Tishan. So we're in the mission. Now, the preparation of course instantly boost my energy to max which is quite nice so we can go straight away 
Now, as I said, we're using a second ability, just going through, getting to the target, target and located. killing Bring him. He's gone invisible. But we just do that, and he's down. Then we can go into operator form. The just stops us really dying. We need to extract. We need our subject brought back alive. He can he can go, that's fine. Mission and then all we need to do is go to, to extraction. extraction. Well done. Now, sometimes what you will find is that once you've captured the target, if you do it too quickly, they will put you on an exterminate mission. If that does happen, you can just leave it and abort the mission. Go into another capture, do the same thing. And the likelihood that it happens twice is very low. To strike. You strike but that is it. The lesson ends. As I said, I went for speed here, and it's took a, it's taken me one minute ten seconds. It wasn't it wasn't that long at all. So let's get into the next mission. Your okay. enemies have grown fierce. Use all that you have learned. So we're back into. Another mission. We're now in the spy mission. Okay. So again, the preparation just helps us at the start. We don't need to worry about waiting at the start for any extra energy. Now, the one thing I would say about spy missions that would be nice is to have ciphers. Just to press one button and it's and done. We'll start the data. Right. It's just really nice to have. Tenor. And also, as you can see, when I'm hacking, I go invisible. And as you can see on screen now, that is the... That is the untraceable Parazon mod. When you hack a console successfully, you get invisibility for 15 seconds. And this is just a huge help. So, when you do this sort of thing, when you do spies and things, I would definitely recommend ciphers and untraceable. Because they are very useful. The Hack this, 15 alive. seconds if you the of now, the enemy will start invisibility. Stay focused. There's a heavy unit approaching. And then obviously the ciphers. Data extracted. Instead of the just uh, sitting there, you know actually doing the puzzle not that it's hard but one button and it's done for you oh okay never been down there before right now all we need to do is get the final console but also notice how I'm constantly, pretty much constantly, always in. The enemy will start destroying data. I'm always in. Um, that's my friend of thought there. I am always in. Um, uh, my second ability. Obviously, I come out of it after the five seconds, but as soon as five seconds is up. I'm straight back into it. No and there we go. Clean extraction, no alarms, extraction. done. Now all we need to do is get to extraction. Now if you are using Loki or Ash, it will be the same thing except you just Your won't be moving that quick. Was greater. This is good. But yeah, as I said, two things I would definitely recommend on the spy mission, ciphers and untraceable. But yeah. With that done, let's get into the final mission. Accept okay, so we're into the final mission, the rescue avoid. mission. Trust Again, as always, preparation saves us a lot of time at the beginning of the mission. And we can just start going instantly. You are approaching so we're here now. Area. So we just go up to it. You, they will surely initiate nice thing about ciphers and traceable, it's quick. We will get an easy 15 seconds and we can just do this with no enemies hurting us or anything like that. And the thing is about this as well, is we need to be quick because the idea here is that 
obviously we're trying to go as quick as possible to make the hostage teleport with us I can fight too. give me a weapon right so they are hurting him but he's teleporting so fast that they can't actually kill him and that's it one minute 24 didn't take that long either so all of these missions I think are designed to be quite quick and done quite fast but that is it that's all three missions done and that is it for today's episode the first episode of the solo warframe guide on the steel path Hopefully this video helped you. If it did and you enjoyed, leave a like, subscribe to the channel. Any questions you have on any of the builds or any of the missions, slap those in the comments below. I will answer them. And I hope you all have a wonderful day. And I will see you in the next video. Peace.